Hey, good morning and good afternoon to some of you. Uh, we are so thrilled to have the next webinar for you today. The webinar is on engage and empower strategies for better patient engagement. So are you all ready to take your patient engagement to the next level? Well, uh, with that said, we can't wait to show you all the tools and solutions that we have for you today. And we hope to see amazing results uh, together. So my name is Dia Ranjan. I am the Senior Marketing Manager at Bismatics, and I am excited to be your host for today's session. Uh, today, we would be diving deep into the strategies and techniques and the ways in which you can engage your patients and help them uh, take proactive role in their healthcare journey. Uh, when patients take proactive role in their journey and they show interest in the journey, it definitely leads to better healthcare outcomes for them, as well as uh, you know, boosts productivity for practices. So it's a win-win situation for the patient as well as for uh, providers and practices. Our presenter for today's session is Julia Young. Uh, Julia plays an integral part in marketing. She's a marketing executive, but prior to her role in marketing, she was an implementation manager and she implemented prognosis EHR for uh, many clinics. So Julia has the breadth of knowledge about the product uh, welcome, Julia. We look forward to hearing all that you have in store for us today. Uh, so before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that we do have a question and answer session uh, towards the end of the presentation. So please type in your questions in the question box and send it over to us and we will answer them as we get them. So over to you now, Julia. Hello, everyone. Um, like Dia had mentioned, our webinar today is on Engage and Empower Strategies for Better Patient Engagement. What we will be covering during this webinar is what is patient engagement? Why is it important? What are some of the benefits of patient engagement and tools to engage and empower your patients? So we're gonna start with what is patient engagement? Patient engagement is the process of involving your patients in their own healthcare and decision making. Educating your patients, teaching them how to self-manage their conditions uh, will have the patient more likely to Im make informed decisions, appear to treatments, and have a higher level of patient satisfaction. Why is it important? Patient engagement is about interactions and the results. So clinics should educate and empower their patients to have some control in their medical decision making in accordance with that patient's lifestyle. Engaged patients are more likely to keep appointments, adhere to treatments, inform decisions, and um, have better outcomes. I wanted to share some statistics with you today from the National Institute of Health they state that the patients who are engaged in their healthcare are two and a half times more likely to adhere to their medication regimens than those who are not engaged. The advisory board committee or company stated that engaged patients have 40% lower risk of being readmitted into the hospital within 30 days of the discharge. Health Affairs states that patients who are engaged in their health care have 12% lower health care costs than those who are not engaged. Accenture stated that 77% of patients believe that patient engagement technology would improve their overall health experience. The American Medical Association stated that patients who have who use the patient portal are more likely to schedule appointments, request prescription refills, communicate with their healthcare providers than those who do not use the portal. So what are some of the benefits of patient engagement? Uh, better health outcomes. The reason there are better health outcomes is because patients who are engaged tend to follow treatments keep their appointments and have better lifestyles. Um, lower healthcare costs. Engaged patients take an active role in managing their healthcare, following lifestyle, uh, healthy lifestyles, 
monitoring their systems and reduce complications for the um, healthcare. And uh, they get involved in planning and decision making. They improve their um, coordination. They have improved coordination among providers and reduce the risk of duplicating and uh, or experiencing conflicting treatments. Improved patient experience. Patients that are engaged are more likely to take an active role in their um, healthcare, which leads to greater sense of empowerment for the patient. Avoid complications. Engaged patients are more likely to recognize changes in their health status and then report them in a timely manner. That would lead to early detection and intervention of a potential complication or um, threatening uh, illness, preventing, an preventing it to become a more serious condition. Managing chronic conditions. Engaged patients are more likely to develop a self-managing skills which they can monitor their symptoms, medication, and follow a healthy lifestyle. Prevent hospital readmission. Engaged patients are more likely to take an active role in managing their health, monitoring, the, uh, monitoring systems, and following a healthy lifestyle. This will reduce in the risk of complications and hospital readmissions. Better communication. Engaged patients are more likely to ask questions, express concerns, and adjust their treatment as needed. Gain knowledge. Gaining knowledge can empower patients to take an active role in their health care, provide better understanding of the condition, and better decision making. So that brings us to our last one, which is make better decisions. Informed patients are empowered to make better healthcare choices and are less likely to get unnecessary treatment. They have more trust in their healthcare providers and they have a more satisfying healthcare experience, which brings us back to number one, better health outcomes. Now benefits to your practice for having patient engagement. You're more likely to keep, patients are more likely to keep appointments. When patients are engaged, they are have an active role in their healthcare. So they have a better understanding of steps in preventing health illnesses. They understand the importance of regular health checkups and screenings. Um, adhere to prescribed treatments. So when patients are engaged, they're more likely to understand the importance of the treatment and they are involved in this decision-making, which makes them more committed to the treatment. They have higher levels of satisfaction. Engaged patient, patients feel like they're being heard and understood. They receive more personalized care and have a better understanding of their health and feel like they're more in control of their health. Involved, um, Patient outcomes. Engaged patients are more involved. Oh, I'm sorry, improved patient outcomes. They're more involved in their healthcare, improving the success rate of your clinic. Reduce, reduced healthcare cost. Engaged patients are more likely to keep appointments, reducing the amount of no shows. They stay on top of their treatments, lowering their healthcare utilization and treatments. Increase patients' loyalty and um, retention. So engaged patients feel more satisfied, which leads to loyalty and retention of your patients. And more active, uh, more attractive to patients with looking for high quality of care. And this is because patients that are engaged have improved outcomes. It involves personalized care, better communication, increased trust, better overall health experience. Increased referrals. 
engaged patients are more likely to refer a friend due to the trust and satisfaction of their personalized care. And then builds trust when patients feel more involved and invested in decision-making through improved communication and increased education, they build trust in their healthcare providers. So we're going to talk about some tools today that are going to engage your patients and empower them. The first one is going to be your patient portal. Patient portal empowers your patients to have an active role in their health care. Patients can access health information at any time as well as upload medical information. They can um, have the ability to view their schedule appointments and also make or request new appointments. They can request refills and view their medication list at any time. They have secured messages, so they have the ability to receive secure messages and send secure messages to the provider. Billing payments, patients can um, access their billing information uh, make payments as well as um, view any payments that have been made. What I find is a lot of times the clinic knows that they have a um, patient portal, but a lot of times the users don't have never actually seen it or they don't know what to say to the patient on how to use it or um, what are some of the things that they can do. So here I have a uh, picture of the patient portal homepage. And on the patient portal homepage, you can see that we have an area where they can see their appointments and they can click here to make a new appointment. They can see messages sent by the provider or in anybody from the office. They have compose, inbox, and sent. And then they have uh, their account information down here. They have links if they want to click on a link to refill a uh, prescription or see lab trends. Right here we have healthcare reminders, things that are coming up that's gonna be due soon. And then we have our clinic information so they can see the provider, the uh, phone number and address of that clinic. So one of the things that is really important for the patient portal is being able to share information. So document sharing is really, really important. If they go to the health um, tab right here, My Health Records, they have different options for getting documentation. They have a, a health summary after their visit. They have their past visits. And if you share your visit notes, they would be in there. They could click on the little view button and see their progress note that you wrote. Um, they can see lab results, radiology results. The ones that say trends like vital trends, lab trends, and radiology trends, they show results over time. So the screen that we're looking at here in the background is your vital trends. And you can see that there's multiple dates. These are dates the patient was seen and the vitals for that particular date. So here you can see we have a weight like 280, 180, 225. So it shows how this weight is fluctuating over time. Um, if you click this button here, it would show it in a graph form. So this is a great way for patients to get information or stay on top of what's going on with their health. Right here, we also have education. So any education material that you uh, share with your patient can be um, um, accessed through the portal under the education, education tab. You have health summaries. So at the end of the visit, um, they have a summary of that visit. You can see the health summary. And you can also see attached documents. Now, one way to attach a document is to come over here to documents and clinic share documents are documents that the clinic has shared with the patient. So um, in your document list on the EMR side, you can choose to share a document or not share a document with the patient. Any documents that will be shared will be under the clinic share documents and they can just click on the view tab and view that document. Over here, they have filter where they can go in and they can filter out a specific range. So you could say last month or this month. Um, here, you can put in a specific date range. You can uh, filter out a document type. You can filter out by a provider. 
And then anything that has a specific category, you can filter out that category. Um, right here where it says attach documents, the patient is able to attach documents back to the clinic. Um, here you would have um, a category, they would give it a category, and there's a drop down list for them to choose from. So it'd be like labs or progress note, radiology. Then they have a um, subject area where they can enter a subject, and then they can click this button here that says attach documents. And this attach document button will allow them to search their files for a PDF file that they can upload, or they can uh, drag and drop that document into that field. This is if they wanted to share a link with the provider. If they had some information that was a link, they could also reference a link. Any shared documents would come across here and they can always see what they have shared with the clinic. Another great way to share information with the patient or the patient can share with the clinic um, is the patient forms. Under the patient forms, you have your intake forms and any forms that you might have the patient fill out prior to coming into your office, all they would have to do is click on whatever form you want them to fill out and they can fill that out prior to coming in, which means it can save your um, patient wait time once they arrive into the clinic um, and speed up your process a little bit. Um, the other thing they have is legal documents. Legal documents would be your consent forms. Oh, let me go back for one second. I wanted to show you an example of a document. So you can have your patient intake form put into the system and it will auto populate in the system where it belongs. So once you've saved it and accepted it, the, the complaint that the patient's coming in for could automatically be populated. The um, allergies, current medication, past medical history, any of that stuff that's on the face sheet could automatically be populated. And then their review of systems, what they're having pain with today, um, that could also be automatically populated. So this is just an example of a patient form. So let me go back to patients, uh, patient forms and legal documents. Legal documents are any consent forms that you would have the patient sign. They can also sign those prior to coming into your office. So if you just tell them, which ones you need signed, they can have them already completed before they ever arrive. So that um, they have to sign new, which would be new forms that need to be signed. But once they sign them, they come over to the sign side and you can see the patient's signature down here, which they, um, once they've signed it, and it automatically comes back into your legal documents section on your um, patient register. So it's automatically gonna be there. Now, another thing that a patient can do on the portal is they can either request or they can um, make and schedule an appointment with the clinic. Now, this is totally up to the clinic whether they choose request, where the patient can request an appointment, or if they let the patient go ahead and make that appointment. Up here at the top, it's partly cut off because of this pop-up, but it says in clinic or telemed. So they can also choose whether they're having a clinic a visit in your office or if they want to do a telemed visit. Here you would have your location and it would show the address of the location that they selected. They can have the visit type, what they're coming in for, and which provider they want to see. Once they have entered all of this information, then down here at the bottom is the available times for the next five days for that particular provider. So they would see any open time slot, they would choose a time slot, and then they would get this pop-up message here. This is so that can confirm that everything here is correct. If it's correct, they can hope, go ahead and hit schedule now. If it's not correct, they can cancel and fix whatever issue is not right. Once they've done that, then the appointment gets a confirmation down here. So if it's, um, this one says uh, confirmation details and it says tentative. So this is letting them know that for this one, they requested an appointment. So the clinic will get back with them and confirm that that appointment time is okay and go ahead and confirm that appointment. If it's a um, schedule an appointment, it would just show that it was scheduled. And then the appointment information is over here. 
They also have right here past appointments where they can go back and they can see any previous appointments. So if they remember that they came in here on a certain day or time, um, they don't remember the exact date, they can come back in here and look at that appointment information. They also have the ability to request refills. So under prescription tab, any uh, medications that they're currently taking would be listed here, the directions, pharmacy that it was sent to, and the status of that um, um, medication. They can select the medication by putting the check mark here, and then hit the request button down here in the lower right corner and request a refill. This refill request will go to your patient portal support person, and they can, um, the provider can either choose to refill the request or to deny it. And maybe they deny it and refill something else or want to see the patient first. So they have the option. Um, here we have a messaging center. So in the messaging center, we have inbox, sent box, and compose. So right now we're in the inbox and we can see any messages that the clinic has seen to the, sent to the patient. They just click on the little envelope to open it up. They can read the message all in details. If they click on sent, then they can see the sent uh, messages, messages that the patient sent to the clinic. And then right here we have compose. If we click on compose, this is how the patient would write the message. So this message goes to your patient portal support person. Um, that has patient messages rights. Um, if they have patient messages rights, you can have one or multiple patients in your uh, employees in your office that receive the patient support message, and then they can route that message to whichever provider, or maybe they handle the message, or whatever they need to do with that. They can take care of that. Um, when the patient is writing the message, they can put in the subject. They can put in a their message, whatever their message might be. And then they can also attach something to this message. And then they come down here to the right corner and hit send. And that will send the message to your clinic. And this is secured messaging. You can also respond to that secured messaging in the message center um, in prognosis. When you send a message from the message center to a patient in prognosis, to their regular email address, it will say, your provider has sent you a message. Please log on to your patient portal to read it. So they would actually have to come back to their patient portal, log in, and then they would be able to see the message that you sent. Okay, we have um, uh, the billing tab. Under the billing tab, we have patient outstanding, patient payments, and statements. Under the outstanding, uh, button, we can see all the patient balance across here and how old it's getting, so the patient aging. We can see the current balance that they have due or outstanding, uh, the last amount that they paid, and we have another amount. So they can either pay the total outstanding, what they paid last month, or they can pay the total amount of outstanding. They can go ahead and enter their um, comments here and click the make payment button. Now, um, once they click the make payment button, they will need to uh, enter their credit card information and then hit um, make payment. And then it will go ahead and process their credit card. And this will come into your patient receipts on the billing side. If they click the patient payment button, then the patient payment will show them every receipt that they have ever made. So once they make that patient payment, it creates a patient receipt and the date that they received it. So they automatically will get a receipt for making that payment. And then we also have the patient statements. So all the statements that you ever send to the patient will come in here and they can click on the hyperlink of the uh, date and that statement will actually appear. Now, these are printable. They can save them to a PDF or they can print them out, whatever they need to do. Um, if they wanted to mail it in the statement, they could detach this here and go ahead and mail it back in. Or again, they could go back to the um, outstanding and make that payment. Now, another great tool that we have is patient apps. Um, the patient app is a great way for patients to always have their medical 
uh, information accessible to them. Um, maybe they're going to another provider and they need to have something from your office. They can easily look it up. Um, it has a lot of the same abilities as the patient portal. Um, I would recommend though, if you're going to fill out forms, have them do it on the patient portal. It's a lot easier to see them and access them, to mark them on the portal than it is on the app. But um, they can still do it on the app if they needed to. It's just a little easier on the portal because you can see them better. Um, right here where it says, um, you can download these apps in Google and in iPhone. So they're available both in Android and iPhone and it's free of charge to download it. The only thing that they would really need to use the patient app is your clinic ID. Um, a lot of times clinics will pass out a like a paper that says, you know, download our app and this is the clinic ID, ID you need to um, access it. To get your clinic ID, it is on your home page under the I button. It'll say clinic ID. Right now there are four digits. So you can just give them those four digits and they'll be able to access their information on the app. Another tool that you can use in your office is ProCheckIn. So if you're not using it yet, you may want to consider. Um, patients can come in instead of waiting in a long line, they can go up to a kiosk or a tablet and they can put their first name, last name and date of birth. This will automatically mark them arrive for the actual time that they showed up. So they're not waiting behind a bunch of people and it looks like they came later. Um, so they can actually mark themselves in. Once they arrive themselves, they can hit this button to just be back on this main screen. And if you want them to fill out any paperwork, the same paperwork that's available on the patient portal is also available in ProCheckIn. So you can, they can click on the forms you want them to complete. And they can also uh, sign legal forms from here. Now, the nice thing about ProCheckIn and the patient portal, when they complete the forms, they're automatically in your system. So you're not scanning in forms. You're, you're not, um, you know, you don't have to worry about being accurate information because this is the information that the patient is already filling in. You can definitely review it before you save it. But once you save it, it's um, automatically in your system and um, it's already populated. So it makes it really nice and simple. No paper. Um, communicate and educate. So with communication and education, um, when you use communication tools, it helps to relay information about the patient's condition. And then you educate the patient, giving them education material, um, on their condition, maybe possible treatments that you might be doing, it leads to better outcomes. So the patient having the education of their healthcare can make better decisions. They're more likely to hit, uh, adhere to the treatment since they understand what's happening and why it's necessary, and then resulting in better outcomes. So encourage communication with your patients, ask questions, um, let them voice concerns, it helps the provider to better understand the patient's needs and preferences, but also listening and addressing the patient's concerns quickly in a, in a respectful manner, um, asking the patient for feedback, identifying areas where you can improve your clinic and your services, help to tailor to that patient's needs and makes it a better experience for your patient. Uh, communicate with illustrations. Now, illustrations is located in your table of content, um, on your table of content menu over here, and it's called illustrations. Um, it's a great teaching tool. If you don't have it there, when you if you look at it and you don't have it there, it could be that it's not been activated. So just ask um, tech support to activate illustrations for you. Um, you can pull up different uh, parts of the body, like the brain or cornea or um, just all kinds of different things. There's lots of different ones in there and you can add others. You can have others added if you needed to. This one here, I pulled up an illustration of the stomach and the liver, but you can take this illustration while you're explaining to things to patients and you can use this mark pen and you can check, just click on different areas and mark different areas maybe that has a problem. Or you can use the, click the draw button and you can draw on the, 
stomach or the liver and explain what's going on. This helps the patient to better understand what their condition is and gives them um, more likely to adhere to the treatment. So another way where you can give education to your patient is um, we have Medline Plus and Merck manuals in the system. Um, they are accessible on the assessment and plan screen, current medications from the face sheet, and past medical history also on the face sheet. Uh, for the current medication and past medical history, you actually have to click into the, um, the screen, and then it's all the way over to the right. So if you scroll all the way over to the right, you'll see it. Um, and then the Medline Plus on the assessment, is, um, assessment and plan screen, if you uh, have your diagnosis in there and you hit save, the uh, education buttons come and then you can click on them. Um, you have Medline Plus and Merck. They allow you to email, print, or put it on the portal. Um, and anything that you email or print automatically goes on the portal. So you can um, have this information right, readily available to them. They usually link you to a website that explains whatever the condition is. So they're great tools that you can use. Also, you have clinic education. In clinic education, the clinic is able to upload educational material into the education button for the patients, and you can create your own education library. So this would be under settings, configuration, clinic, and education. And you can upload any PDF document on any procedure you might be doing to explain that procedure, um, vaccines that you're giving, any of that kind of stuff. Now the systems do come with some education material in it, so you may wanna view that education material to see if it's education material that you want to use. And you can deactivate it if you don't, but you can also add your own. So if you have uh, special guides that you like to use, sometimes clinics will put in discharge summaries into their education material. That way they can just print them out when the patient's there, but it also goes on the portal that way. That's a great use of that tool. Um, the other education that we have in our system is medication information. So that's the information sheet that's available when you go get your prescriptions at the pharmacy. They have that paper that's sta stapled to every medication. This is the same sheet, and this is located on the prescription screen uh, up at the top where you're entering your prescription information, there's a blue I button. And when you click on that blue I button, it will give you uh, information about the prescription that you're entering. So if you've entered several uh, prescriptions, you wanna click on the first line and click the I button and then click on the second line and click the I button and then you can get information about both, okay? So it's a great tool for giving the patient information about their medications. Another um, tool is patient reminders. Um, according to Forbes, no shows in the United States cost the healthcare industry over $150 billion a year. It's an average uh, practice price of $50,000 a year. So some reasons for missed appointments could include things like forgot their appointment, uh, transportation issues, work, um, lengthy wait times, so um, it was, Forbes commented that when patients receive a reminder within four days of their appointment, um, the no-show rate increases or improves uh, 27%. So a couple ways that you can send reminders from prognosis is we do have text reminders. Text reminders can go out at a particular period prior to their appointment. Usually when I set them up, I set them up 24 hours in advance. And then if you, you can choose to have a reply reminder as well. Um, the, the patients can put Y for confirming their appointment or N for canceling their appointment. Um, so that is one way. Another way that you can do reminders is um, under appointments. And if you scroll down to appointment reminders, we have email reminders and email reminders can be sent out on demand. So you can choose when you want to send them out. You choose the reminder type and then you choose the uh, date range that you want a email reminder to go out. 
any patient that comes up during that um, time, if you have an email address in the system, you can check this box right here and click save and it will send email reminders automatically to all the patients that have the emails. And then it'll show you like here, this one doesn't have an email, so they got no reminder. So you can call on those patients if you needed to, to remind them of their appointment. That will reduce your call list. Um, another option that for the email reminders is that you, uh, you can get with tech support and set up a scheduled email reminder. So uh, you can set up a scheduled process to do this for you automatically. Um, so that is another way that you can handle that. Now, another thing that you can do is waitlist. Um, the waitlist is a great help to capture uh, loss of revenue due to cancel appointments. It also aids the patient in coming in sooner who may not otherwise get seen for weeks. And uh, practices that implement waitlist have seen a 27% increase in revenue. So if you've never set up a waitlist before, you can easily schedule the waitlist. Um, first, what you would do is you would schedule the patient appointment. So let's say that I don't have any appointments available until May 1st. I would go ahead and schedule the patient for an appointment on May 1st. I would enter all the information and hit schedule. Once I do that, I can click back into that appointment and now I have a waitlist button. You don't see that button until after you've hit schedule. So you have to click back into the appointment to find the waitlist button. Once you do that, the information, the provider location, and the patient will be the same that you just scheduled for. Okay, so that automatically defaults. You don't have to put anything here. And then where it says preferred date, the preferred date is always tomorrow, not today. Because if you had an appointment opening today, you would go ahead and give that appointment opening to the patient. So today is the 13th of April. I would go ahead and make my preferred date tomorrow. Now, if the patient says I can't come in until next week, you can make it next week and that's fine. Um, then you want to put in the hours and the minutes of when the patient is available. So if they're available at 8.30 a.m., I would put 8, 8 a.m. here and 30 minutes. So 8.30 and up to five o'clock. So I put 5 p.m. here, say okay. So now what would happen is that you would get a canceled appointment and now you wanna call in somebody from that wait list. So in your appointment schedule screen, up in the upper left corner, you have a box that looks like this. And most of the time it says to be confirmed. So these would be confirming the appointments that are already on the schedule. Um, I can click on this telephone button here and I can change that to waitlist and pull up my waitlist. I can go ahead and click on the patient's name, call them up, see if they can come in at the time that my canceled appointment was. So let's say that it's on Friday the 14th. I can go ahead and schedule them Friday the 14th. When I schedule them a new appointment and they've been on the waitlist, the original appointment for May 1st now gets removed automatically because I've rescheduled them to a new date. So I don't have to worry about when was the original day or anything like that. Once I schedule them from the wait list, then um, that appointment gets removed and I don't have to go back and take it off. Um, telemedicine, telemedicine is a great way to um, see patients remotely. It's really helpful for patients that have transportation issues or mobility issues. Um, they can easily join a telemedicine call. If they have the app, they can just click on this button and join the call. If they don't have the app, no problem. They can. They will receive a text reminder on their phone. Um, they can click on the text reminder and they can join that way. They also receive an email reminder that will um, allow them to join by email. So if they wanna join on a bigger screen like their computer, they can log into their email, click on the email reminder, and join the meeting at that time. Great tool. Now, I just want to give you a summary of some of the tools that we uh, offer that you can use in your clinic to get more patient engagement. So Patient Portal and the Patient Portal app, they empower the patients to uh, be able to view their documents, 
refill request, um, communicate with the practice, schedule appointments, and make payments. Uh, the pro check-in empowers the patient to be able to check themselves in when they arrive, complete any necessary paperwork, but it also helps the staff from having to check patients in. It, has, it saves them from having to uh, manually scan in paperwork that they've completed. So it, it is a time saver there. Um, communication. Communication engages the patients to voice their concern. It helps the provider to better understand their needs and preferences. Um, education. Education, the, uh, providing education material empowers the patient to have a better health, make better health decisions and stick to their regimen. And then patient reminders and wait list um, reduces the amount of no-shows that comes into your office. Um, having a wait list enables the patient to get treatment faster and increases the revenue from that could be lost from canceled appointments. And then we have the telemedicine, which allows patients with mobility and transportation issues to receive care while also increasing revenue for your practice. So in conclusion, statistics have shown that by empowering your patients with patient engagement tools, allows the patient to make a more active role or take a more active role in their healthcare, improve the overall health, while improving patient satisfaction, retention, outcomes, and reducing the cost of healthcare. Now, I've, I've added some uh, pages just for sources where I got my quotations from, and then I wanna thank everybody for joining today. Um, we're gonna be opening it up to questions, but before we open the questions, I just wanted to say for any existing customer, if you need help setting up anything, um, please call customer support. If you're not yet a customer, but you'd like to learn more about any of the features we discussed today, you can call our sales number. I'm gonna leave them on the screen while we talk about questions, and that way you have time to write them down or, or get that information. Um, so, Dia, are there any questions for today? Yes, Julia, but before we begin, I wanted to thank you for this wonderful presentation. And <clears throat> actually, as a patient myself, Julia, I can say that there were quite a few tools that you showed has been very, very uh, beneficial for me. Like, you know, appointment reminders. We all are so busy in our day-to-day -day life and in our work that sometimes you forget. So appointment reminders and, you know, text messages are so important. One of the other things that I find very important is discharge summary. Because, you know, while you're at the clinic, you, you know, the doctor tells you that this is what you need to do. You might tend to forget. So when you come home, Either it's printed out, you carry it with you, or it's in the email. Uh, it really helps you to go over all the information and you know medications, if there's anything that you need to do or any appointment that you need to set up with another doctor. Um, it's very helpful. So uh, looking at it from a patient standpoint, I think these all are very helpful for engaging all of us and you know helping us in our care journey, taking better decisions. So thank you so much, Julia, again, for you know, sharing all these tools with, um, with everyone. I am hoping that it is very helpful for all. Um, and then, yeah, we do have um, uh, quite a few questions that came in. You know, people have shown interest in telemedicine, in draw tools. So let me start with them. Okay. So yeah, the very first question is, can illustrations be shown on the progress notes uh, like draw tool? Yes, so there. if you want to use illustrations, um, there are tags that will need to be added to your um, progress note if you want to have those illustrations to be shown on your progress note. So if you um, need help setting that up, call tech support. And there are some tags, just tell them that you would like to have illustrations to show on your progress note, like drill tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... The second question is, is there a fee for patient apps? Do we no. Know so the patient, port, the patient apps can be downloaded from um, Google Play or the App Store. Um, they are free of charge. They can be iPhone or Android, either one. Um, the only thing that they really need for the, to operate the patient app is the clinic ID. That's so seed set back to your clinic. Um, so as long as you can share the uh, clinic ID with the patients, they can utilize the patient app. Okay. Uh, the next question is on text messages. 
so when patients reopen a text message, um, does that count towards the number of text messages? I think it means that do we need, yeah, do we need to pay? So yeah, just go ahead. Yes, so the text messages, it does count. Um, it counts as one going out and one coming in. So it counts as two text messages. Um, unfortunately, that is the way it is. It is set up through um, AT&T and that's how they charge them. So as one goes out and one comes in, it does count as two messages. But you don't have to have the reply if you don't want to um, have the reply. You can just do one going out and not have them reply. So you have the option. Okay. Um, so the next one is about patient surveys. So uh, I'd like to conduct patient surveys. Uh, do you offer surveys? I think you did mention that, but I'd let you speak to it. Yes. Yeah, so we do have um, patient prognosis doesn't offer the actual patient survey. So you would have like use a, a service like Survey Monkey or Google Surveys, but um, talk to our tech support because what they can do is they can connect that um, patient survey or Survey Monkey to prognosis so that when you close your encounter, a survey is automatically sent. Okay. All right. So you will have to use uh, Survey Monkey uh, and then connect that, right? Yes, you would use okay. SurveyMonkey or Google Surveys, but but we can set it up to where it automatically will go out, and then it goes into your personal email or what your company email address instead of into prognosis. Mm -hmm. I think this is another good idea to get the patient survey and the patient feedback, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The next is there's been interest in telemedicine so i'd like to use uh, start using telemedicine so what are the next steps or what do i need to do to get started okay so if you are a current customer you can just call tech support and um, let them know that you would like to add telemedicine and they will um, get that set up and and explain the process to you um, the, and even uh, you can ask for some training on that as well um, the other thing is if you're not a current customer, um, you can use telemedicine as a standalone. So if you wanted to use our telemedicine um, product, um, they do have a, one where you can use the telemedicine and then keep using your EMR if you wanted to do that. But all you have to do is call tech support if you're a, a current customer, call sales if you're not a current customer. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that, Julia, because just a follow-up question came up. It says that if you want to use telemedicine only, could you do that? And yes, you, uh, one can do that, right? Just use it. Yes, for their they, they do have a package where you can use just the telemed. Okay, all right. All right, good. Uh, we have this one last question that's there, and that's about draw tools. So what is the difference between a draw tool and illustrations? Like, what is the yeah, that's a really good question because they are very very similar um one big thing that i've noticed is that one withdrawal tool you get the little message boxes and they point to specific areas um you don't have that with illustrations and the other thing is that in draw tool i've noticed that it's more external like the head or the shoulder, arm, legs, knees. Um, the illustrations are more internal, the brain, the eyes, the liver, kidneys, you know, you, you may have a knee, but it'd be like the knee ligaments and things like that. So depending on what your practice is, you could have both because there's no fee to have both. You can have both. Um, you can have one or the other. So depending on if you're more an internal clinic and working with internal parts of the body, you would use illustrations. If you're more external, like orthopedics or something like that, you may use more um, the draw tool. So it really depends on your specialty, but you can have both. So you can, and there are tags to both, to put them on your progress note if you want to do that. Okay. All right. Those are all the questions that we had today. And I'd say that you know, if you there are any questions, you can reach out to us at uh, marketingsj at bismaticsinc.com. 
or reach out to our support if you're a customer or if you're a new, um, you know, if you want to use Prognosis EHR, you can contact our sales team. Um, thank you once again, Julia. That was a lot of uh, good information. Um, but before, you know, we end the session, I was wanting to tell you all that we will share the recording of this webinar. We share it in various different ways, either through the email or if you are a customer, you can visit the resource center. We have all the webinars in the resource center, in the, you know, all the past webinars, this webinar, so you can access it from the resource center. So thank you to all our attendees, to our audience for taking time to explore patient engagement and the tools that will benefit you and your patients. And thank you to Julia once again for this presentation. Um, so bye from all of us here at Prognosis. Thank you.